Hello students, in today's video we will learn about spermatophytes. It is the last major group that comprises plants kingdom. Compared to bryophytes and pteridophytes, spermatophytes is a group of higher plants. It is because they possess vascular tissue and differentiated organ structure. Also, it has a more complex life cycle and reproduction mechanism, especially by the existence of seed. Spermatophytes, or we can call them as seed plants, can be grouped into two major groups based on the location of the seeds. First, gymnospermy. Its name was derived from two Greek words, gymno, which means naked, and sperma, which means seed. This group of plants white known as conifers. The second group is angiospermy. Its name was derived from two Greek words, angion, which means enclose, and sperma, which means seed. We encountered many species from this group of plants very often, especially due to its flowers, which come in various shapes and beautiful colors. This fan diagram shows the similarities and differences that exist between two large groups of spermatophytes. First, we can see that both gymnosperms and angiosperms are seed plants. In seed plants, there is no more alteration between the sporophyte and gametophyte phases. In seed plants, gametophyte has been reduced and has become completely dependent on sporophyte. This is the main similarities between gymnosperms and angiosperms. However, here also lies the main difference between the two. Seeds in gymnosperms are open seeds. It is not protected or surrounded by what we usually call as fruit, whereas a fruit is coming from the development of flowers. The seeds in gymnosperms are found in leaves which are modified into a strobilus or a cone. The seeds in angiosperms are closed seeds because the seeds come from an organ called a flower. Flower, especially female flower, have an ovary which later will develop or modify into a fruit which will cover or wrap the seeds. That is the main difference between gymnosperms and angiosperms. For the rest, there are differences in leaf shapes and habitat for the two groups of plants. Now let's talk about the life cycle and reproduction of gymnosperms. This is the diagram that describes the life cycle and the reproduction mechanism of gymnosperms. Gymnosperms does not have flowers. Seeds are not protected. The seeds are found on strobilus or cone. Strobilus consists of two types, male strobilus and female strobilus. Each produces sex cells, pollen, and egg. Both sex cells meet and fertilization occur. Finally, seeds will develop into new individuals. Next is the, the classification of gymnosperms. Gymnosperms can be divided into four classes, which include psychodophytes, gnetophytes, coniferophytes, and ginkophytes. You can see in the given list is the main characteristic of each class. These are the pictures that give us the example of the individual plant in each class. Now move on to the life cycle and reproduction of angiosperms. In the right side of your screen, you can see a diagram that describes the angiosperms life cycle and reproduction mechanism. There are two sex organs in angiosperm. Male, known as stamen, which produces pollen, and female, known as pistil, which produces egg. In pistil, an ovary is exists as a place for fertilization and seed development. Later, it will become a fruit. 
both sex cells meet and fertilization occurred. Angiosperms having a double fertilization which produces zygote and endosperm. Finally, the seed will develop into new individual plant. These are the three types of flower in angiosperms. First is the plant with hermaphrodite flowers. Simply, there is one flower with two sex organs. The second is monoecious plant, which there are two flowers with one sex organ on each of it, but still there exists in one same plant. And the last type is dioecious plant, which there are two individual plants with different sex on each of plant. Next is the classification of angiosperms. Angiosperms can be divided into two major classes based on the number of embryonic leaf. The first one is monocotyledon, which is any plants that have one embryonic leaf. Systematically, it consists of 11 orders and 45 families. The example plant of this group is Orisa sativa, Cocos nucifera, and Musa paradisiaca. The second group is Dicotyledon, which is any plants that have two embryonic leaves. It consists of 44 orders and the largest number of family in the plant's kingdom, 261 families. The example plant of this group is Hefea brasiliensis, Mimosa pudica, Solanum lycopersicum, and Solanum tuberosum. You can see on your screen a diagram that describes the main characteristic also as differences between those two classes. Here you can see the differences between monocotyledon plants which is represented by corn or zeamice and dicotyledon plants which is represented by bean or Phaseolus vulgaris. This is the diversity of monocots. And this is the diversity of decots. Spermatophytes have many uses and roles in the ecosystem. For example, its main role as oxygen producers and pollutant absorbents can be consumed by us as foods and also other daily needs such as paper, tissue, or our clothes. It also can be utilized to produce medicinal need for housing or building material and as the source of energy called as biomass energy. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this video. Thank you for your attention. Keep learning and God bless you.